Here we see a map of the globe showing us the warming that we've experienced over the last roughly 100 years. You can see that warming is occurring all over, but for the Arctic, warming is occurring two or three or even more times faster than for the rest of the world, meaning that the Arctic is experiencing rapid change and seeing the kind of changes that may be coming to those of us in lower or mid latitudes into the future. This change has been producing incredible differences in the Arctic. For example, in 2021, the Greenland Ice Sheet Summit Station, which is located in the far interior of the Greenland Ice Sheet at high elevation where normally just snow falls. In 2021, the Summit Station for the first time experienced rainfall, something that we had never observed happening in this location before. We also, for example, see changes happening in the ocean around the Arctic. As we think about what the Arctic used to look like, it was an area that had seasonal ice cover. We often think of the north part of our globe covered in sea ice, but we're losing this seasonal ice cover and the warm air that we see in the Atlantic Ocean to the south is starting to push north and we're getting what we call Atlantification of the Arctic Ocean. So we're changing our ocean water temperatures and the salinity. And with that, we're bringing different fish and marine mammal species to the Arctic. So we're seeing profound ecosystem changes as well. And as we're losing this sea ice, we're also seeing changes in how humans use the Arctic. There's more transportation in the Arctic some of these routes that used to always be interrupted by sea ice are now opening up and Russia is especially taking advantage of these northern sea routes in order to move ships, goods, liquid natural gas and generally increase human activity in the Arctic. Now, this has geopolitical implications, implications for resource development and with the Russian war in Ukraine, those geopolitics have become more urgent and more sensitive as well. So these changes happening in the Arctic are having an influence in all spheres of society and also internationally. What can you do about these problems? This is where we need to all bring a climate lens to all aspects of our work. There's many different kinds of changes we can be involved in. They can be personal, they can be involved in our social networks, our organizations. They might be very public or involved in cultural changes. There's a climate lens that can be put on all of our different activities, businesses, investments, and activities. Let's say you or your organization has the means to give to climate action. What's a good place to start? One great way is Active Philanthropy's Climate Solutions Hub with its vetted portfolio of around 20 climate solutions. Here you can browse organizations working to empower local communities, influence minds and policies, or innovate entire industries. And given the variety of solutions needed to tackle the climate crisis, it's easy to find a project that matches your ambitions without wasting valuable time. So the Arctic is one of the fastest warming places on the earth. And that means change is occurring for ecosystems, infrastructure, geopolitics. Change is here now and change is gonna continue into the future. But our best pathways into the future mean that we're addressing climate change and minimizing the speed of these changes so that we're embedding climate action and building resilience to change as we prepare and react to the changes that are coming now and into the future. So it's time to bring that climate lens to everything that you do.